do you in, inspect and coach, right? So if everybody's remote, I uh, don't know if you have any of the, the tech, you know, technology where you, you know, kind of listen on calls and coaching that way, but kind of how do you, do, do, obviously you got the objective, you know, metric numbers, but in terms of kind of, you know, kind of what, what their game is, how, how they're doing, you know, how, how they're doing real time, you know, you can't go on you know, really too many joint sales calls. So how, how do you do that in this environment? Yeah, we actually do have those. You just referenced the technology, the listen-in technology, yeah. the real, you know, real-time feedback technology. You know, with with uh, they, they're really helpful, right? So when you have a lot of young and career, what I've what I've found super interesting is you get this is a debate that a lot of people have. I find them brilliant. I find them willing to learn, willing to activate. They want to learn. They want to make money. So. Randy, we do use tools. Uh, we do. I use per, personally. We use a ton of brown bags each week, where yeah. I must. I, have a, I feel like I have a, a, a million on the calendar. But you get them. You get them on the line, and they're just. Uh, it's really a cool group of people that want to listen, want to learn, give you great feedback. So I don't know, Randy. Just be visible. Uh, a John yeah. Hamlin. You asked me earlier. You know, some of some of your uh, Peter Bell and some of the people in my past. Uh, John comes to mind when I think uh, he calls visibility job one, and uh, and I try to enforce that. You know, just whether you, if you can't be in front of them, be in front of them on camera, just be visible so they can tell you what's going on and you can coach them. We try yeah, to do what, yeah, I mean it's one of the great things with Zoom, right? I mean, back, yeah, back in the day, I'd, I'd fly around and do these town yeah. halls and round tables and all that, but. Yeah, you know, your ability it was it was high quality, but it was hard to do a lot of it. But just you know, this whole Zoom technology now, just your ability to kind of touch, and a lot of people will say, "Well, you're you know you're out of touch." I'd argue, you know, especially for you know great leaders like you, you're actually much more in touch, right? Yeah, I feel like that. I feel like that. Yeah, when I'm flying to London to go meet eight people, you know, we're we're definitely we've we're advantaged when you have, when you have scale underneath you for sure. Oh, that's, that's what, are you, I mean, what are you finding? You're in the sales community. You're you're you've created this amazing network. Uh, how do you go get uh, feed? How are you getting feedback in the modern era? And how are you creating that? Uh, yeah, for me, it's you know just kind of asking, which is uh, you know I'd say just uh, you know j- just old school. But I'd say the culture I know for sure for you know EMC and Dell is uh, you know very kind of upfront, giving and getting feedback. It's not passive aggressive, but you know, I, I see a lot of companies these days that I'd say do it the bad way, which is it's passive aggressive. They don't want to give feedback. Uh, one client I was talking to this morning, they get rid of the uh, sales management, um, kind of the, the <laughs> a lot of the leadership, putting the you know reps on PIP. And I said to the person I was talking to, I, said, I really feel bad for those reps because it's really not their fault. It's partially their fault, but it's really the sales leadership that didn't give them the right coaching, the right development to go do what they're doing now because their numbers are off, you know, they're being let go, but you have to kind of peel back the onion, you know, kind of all, all, all that stuff. So it's, it's, you know, and unfortunately today, you know, I think kind of the great sales culture that you're, you know, part of there is kind of the minority, right? I mean, the majority of the places are just not well run, which is, which is crazy, right? I mean, a lot, a lot of companies have great product market fit, great offering sales should be the easy piece. And that's the piece they're just totally messing up. Yeah, I hear I hear that with a lot of the uh, startups that are now maturing or trying to mature into into something a lot bigger. The environments they've created are just this this complete hammer. And I started the meeting with saying I think leadership has changed and the priorities really should be. I think they should be targeted at wellness. Uh, how are they being productive? What do they need? It's a, geez, that's a lot easier than flushing someone uh, down the drain, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. So um, let's jump into our title topic, winning medium business with integrated scale and speed. So, you know, lo- love that. We've not had uh, not had anything like that. So it's certainly different if you think about a uh, you know pure ninja you know enterprise sales machine. Yours is probably a, lo- a lot more of a velocity motion, right? It is. It is. Let me ask you a question. How many for a new buyer in our world, how many times do you think you have to you have to uh, try to get a hold of them to sell them something, Randy, on average. Uh, so I'm going to say if it's, yeah, I think the logo uh, helps a lot. So for uh, EMC Dell, I'm going to say, let's see, I'm going to say three to five for okay. companies not as well known as probably 10 to 20. And it's probably based more than anything on the message from a value perspective and how it's catered to 
whoever it is you're reaching out to. So the average, and we might have the data a little off, but our average says 17 times. 17? You have to, you have to connect, whether it's social, right? Wow. Whether, whether it's marketing, social, phone calls, uh, chat. Um, and I think, uh, which I find fascinating, right? So you said, you're right. If, if I'm, not the, I'm not the gentleman to have on when you want to talk about enterprise and account planning, and exhaustive planning sessions. When you get into this type of scale business, I, I think a lot about the marrying, as I mentioned earlier, what do we do? We, we have a, a sales individual, a matrixed organization around, around them, specialists, which we're all familiar with, uh, but the way you use them, the better you use them, the better you're gonna do and the more money you'll make. But we really, I, we really spend our cycles in a, in a scale organization, marrying sales, operations, marketing and, and AI today. And if, if we can, if, if in, in a given day, in a given seller, what they're, what they're doing in, in this world is they're receiving tasks, right, from operations saying, hey, um, you know, you have these nine things to do. Let's get a hold of Randy. Let's get a hold of Peter Bell. Let's get a hold of because that's what the AI is, is telling us, right? And then there's an operational dashboard of performance during the day right so it's really it's really super interesting if 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 it's hard by the way it's hard what's hitting them every day but there is a marriage when you get the sales thing right when you get the operational tasks hitting them and when you get marketing driving uh inbound activity yeah that can that can really be a productive a business uh, so you'll have if uh if i'm a rep i'll show up for work in the morning and yep. then I'll have daily from this uh, AI and operations that says, okay, based on everything that's going on and how we handicap and metrics and all that, here's how you should prioritize who you're reaching out to. So it could be l low, medium, or, or high in the funnel, I guess, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And, and you know, in any given time, we're trying to use, uh, we're using industry data, you know, meaning a week, let's say we're in covid Right. And um, and, you know, you're probably not being asked to go contact, uh, you know, entertainment and theater, you know. So so we're trying to we, we try to really get right. them. We're trying to really get them productive actions each week, yeah. each, each month, each quarter. And uh, uh, from it from an you know, that's kind of an internal engine. And then, of course, the marketing, like like I said, um, we're trying to ignite someone to come get come at us. Right. Whether it's using that technology or, or bots or, or what have you. So, yeah. Well, wow. and then on the marketing side, obviously, a common beef from sales is, hey, you know, m marketing's bad. They don't give us quality or quantity and the metrics are off kind of everything else. Uh, what are what are some of the from a sales perspective? You know, what's some of the value add that you get from marketing? You know, it, there is that right. There is the marketing is continually challenged, isn't it? Um, <laughs> sometimes it's because the money it takes to market it is a they, they have a tailor made bullseye on them. Um, some of the best stuff uh, we've seen is is the more recent. There's some amazing technology out there around AI and. And what we're what we're finally getting back around predictive patterns and predictive buying. And Randy, I'm I'm on the front end of of being bullish in technology. And and I've seen some really I've, I've seen some of the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm I'm sure it has a long long way to go. But I'd say I'd say that's an advancement uh, in the last couple of years that's been really inspiring. Uh, yeah. You know who's clicking, Randy? What's he clicking on? What's he buying? What did he buy last time? How many did he buy? When do you think he'll buy next? So we, uh, I know we're probably not indifferent than than maybe we are of some of the smaller companies or or you know, uh, but but um, we really do try to leverage data, and there's some great results from it. Oh, that's great. And then yeah. what about how does your kind of inside outside sales model work? Yeah, so um, we, uh, well, I'm not sure what's outside these, you know, post-COVID, yeah. you know what I mean? Exactly. That's, a good point. That's a great point. <laughs> yeah. How's your inside-inside work? Um, yeah. I, although, as you mentioned, off, off camera, people are starting to get back to work and traveling. And so that is a bit nice to see. But, um, you know, we try to, we try to get, uh, we 
we try to get customers into a into a buying pattern. We try to make the inside, you know, at least in our world, kind of the center of the universe, and and try to use that metric uh, matrix organization to handle as it gets bigger and in, in, in relationship selling. So we use that balance. Uh, uh, we have a ratio, but what we a lot of what we do in medium business because really customers. Uh, it, the data tells us customers really still enjoy that relationship with their inside seller. And as long as they have it, um, they, uh, when they need it, we use the, we use the outside, the field and uh, go support the customer. But with a, with a customer centric model uh, at first, it's a really good design. That's great. So the kind of at the, the purest sense, it's really the inside, um, you know, person kind of would find the lead. If it's a, a smaller account, they may actually do the selling themselves. But then if it's kind of a larger account within your medium business, then that gets passed over to uh, the kind of out, outside rep. Yeah, I think I, I would say that in its simplest form, the complexity will drive the interaction. Yes. But in uh, our hope, at least mine, it should return back to the owner um, inside to dictate and help, and help the customer for their journey. That's that's exactly right. Yeah. Again, hard to do. Um, was that the model in, at HP? Did you have a did you have a similar model, or what would you have said in yeah. your in your, yeah, in your similar? Market? But the technology was nowhere near. I mean, at the time, no. LinkedIn and I'm dating myself, but LinkedIn and Salesforce were huge. But now you've got you know all all these different players that are you know all the stuff that we used to kind of you have to do manually now is all automated which is just you know amazing and, and fa fascinating to to say the least uh and then certainly i know you can't talk about any of the uh, sales tech stack companies that you work with but uh you know with us you know ones that are sponsored with sales community gong outreach uh sendoso decision link others is just you know crazy so uh, mm -hmm. anyway so we have uh, some comments here. To catch up. So Aaron, Isn't it interesting? I mean, just the evolution of time, Randy. Imagine, you know, uh, 30, 25 years ago of being able to have a technology listen in to what someone uh, might buy, huh? Yeah, crazy. I mean, even, instead yeah. Of, yes. Bell, you know, <laughs> instead of Peter, you know. <laughs> over you. Yeah. Peter yelling at you while you're on the phone. <laughs> 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 Uh, anyway, so just catch up on some comments here. So, Eric, thanks for your kind comment. Randy Culture King, top talent, follows him. Uh, and then Jesse, uh, uh, might be old school, but so I do a weekly podcast, uh, might be old school, but just with lots of the stupid stuff I see all the time. And we've got a big back backlog, which is uh, amazing. Uh, and then Ernie asks a uh, question. Great conversation. Since COVID, have you seen any delays in getting reps ramped and productive versus when the reps came to the office? Have sales cycles uh, lengthened or extended due to video selling versus face-to-face -face selling where it accelerates relationships? We have so maybe, seen. Uh, maybe so talk about that. Maybe just break it up. So the first one, maybe talking about the um, kind of getting them ramp ramped and pr productive in this virtual environment. You yeah, think it's better, 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 better or worse? Worse, Ernie, great perception. I think developing and, and getting people ramped as fast as we have historically has been a challenge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and then uh, what about the uh, sales cycles? I assume they've been uh, extended uh, because of COVID and, and video? I, I don't know what you've seen. I don't have that sense. I don't have a sense that sales cycles have extended at all. I think... Um, uh, I don't want to be as dramatic as say the opposite, yeah. Andy, but I've seen that I feel like they've gone, I feel like sales cycles go fast. Uh, customer needs have continued and they're, di they're different, but no, I don't, I don't have that sense. Yeah. And I mean, I mean you guys, back in the day, back, back in the day, you know, if, if I was qualifying you, then you say, okay, great. I'll, you know, come see you and might be two or three weeks out. But now you can do the Zoom, okay, hey, we'll do it in two days or three days or whenever. And then you can get a lot of people together, you know, a lot more easily in the Zoom environment versus face-to-face, -face, right? Yeah, and I think I think just the, the change in the environment of selling where customers aren't necessarily <laughs> turning to their office as well. And we see that across global accounts, enterprise, whatever. So while they're not even returning. So they seem to have needs that they want to get filled and they seem as anxious as the, if, if there's a need as the selling organization. 
So I'd say that's a hard, a hard no. I haven't seen that. But the ramp is, Ernie brings up, the ramp is real. And I think the quicker we can get people, at least young in career, uh, more often together uh, would be a great sign. Right. And then uh, for ramping people up, do you still do a uh, kind of, the, I'll say, old school 30, 60, 90 day plans or a version of that with your new hires? It's actually a little long. It's, it's we've elongated it based on um, the, the volume of solutions and kind of the way selling occurs. And what I mean by that is the what I just talked to you about, the online element to it. And in other words, you have to learn what, what is that and then the marketing element. So we're in a longer window of development when you're on board, but I'm glad to see it. I don't think yeah. I don't I don't know if the goal is to hurry up and get them servicing customers is really uh, the should be the ultimate goal. I think preparedness and and knowing the multi vector, you know, support system is way more important than getting them go go make mistakes in front of our customers. That's great. And then, yeah, on the one hand, it's a learning side, but also from a management side, you're actually inspecting to see how the person or individual is progressing against goals. So you don't have to wait a year or two and find out that they're fatally flawed, for lack of better words. You've got metrics and things in place where you can lean in and coach sooner versus later. Hopefully they step up and work out well, but if not, then you're yeah. able to exit them out, correct? Yeah, and I'll, yeah. And I'll give an example of what we may have not have seen years ago. For instance, you know, I mentioned online, right? So, so selling now, you know, some of that is done online, right? So, customers have changed the way they're buying. So, we can we can take we take an onboard new employee. They're on their journey early. Yeah. If we if we see a red flag around, hey, you have you have. A, a, a very low percentage buying online. You have very low percentage of your customers even engaging. And by online, I mean, we have we have a tool where they can go online and buy a myriad of solutions. That's an example of an indicator that we will pull someone back in and say, do you understand? Do you understand the technology? Do you understand how you're supposed to engage a client? So it's uh, it's not, I just want to inform, you know, enforce with the crew that are trying to learn from scale. It's not necessarily, hey, your number looks like, Right. Yeah. There's there there are other things to keep an eye on yeah. that will assess competence and development. Yeah. So there's behaviors, and if you have those good behaviors, it should lead to a good number. Yes. And the other, other side of it is where a lot of times I think people are fatally flawed, where they'll you know, for lack of better word, yes, you can't use the word shoot people anymore, but they'll you know basically you know fire them. Oh, your numbers are off. But like I've seen situations, uh, as I'm sure you have, where maybe the numbers are off, but they're doing all the right behaviors. And I'd rather have that person than somebody who is crushing a number, maybe just happen to get a bluebird deal in, but the behaviors are bad. Yeah. And you really need to have that level of detail in the management and what, you, what you're doing and how you're doing it in order, in order to do it well, which obviously uh, you and the uh, Dell machine do, right? Yeah. I, it's great that you say that. I couldn't agree more.